it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. Uh, just get on the bus. Go ahead. Okay, bus, yeah, bus, take bus, your bus. step on. Right okay. okay. Rick and Morty. Do you think Rick and Morty are ever going to put out a new season? I don't care. It's not going to be good anymore. It's It's been out too long. It's just last season was okay. It's just never going to be good again. How do you how do you think last season was okay? It's extremely layered conceptually with with themes that are like tugging at your mind in all different directions and I feel like there's a lot going on. Not enough. It's not it, enough. Too boring. <laughs> For me, it's for me. Them cutting off Rick and Morty right now is as if we quit Game of Thrones season five. But I know you would like that. I could gladly do that. I Game would gladly do that. Game of Thrones sucks. We've been watching the first few seasons, and the writing is just so so much deeper. There's so much more space for you know not even just individual characters, but for multiple characters to grow together. I mean the the growth of Tywin and Arya together. I mean. Tywin treats Arya better than so so good. All seasons. three of his children. Yeah. So much prouder of this orphan girl who's able to come up from nothing, because he can see himself in her. And the other three characters, Tyrion, uh, Cersei, and uh, Jaime, could just hates everything they've become, hates who they are, hates how they've come to power, and to embrace it, he says fuck them. I don't want you guys. Just you guys don't make me proud. You've done nothing. I want you to do. You can't even say that now about anyone in the new seasons. All you're saying is like, oh, there's an ice dragon coming, and everyone's joining together to fight it, right? But no one is. No. I mean, Cersei's just mentally, they're not. No, they're, just, they don't have the same. You she's know. just brewing together a whole different counter thing, and that's why they think Jamie's going to turn on her. Yeah. Now that we're in production, now that we're in production, since we're in production. It's, you know, we're able to understand character building and character driving even more. Like, it's very fascinating to watch back on old seasons when you watch Thrones and catch things that you didn't notice before. But it's even more interesting from this perspective that we're in right now of like, oh, I see. I see what they were trying to do with Arya there. I see how they were playing the long con game in her relationship with in the things that she learned from from the Hound and then the things that she learned from Jack in the first time versus the second time around. Yeah, but then also, like, they, you, you can't change and give favoritism to characters. Because all the other characters you fell in love with, they made it, they, they, they just died. You fell in love with them, and they're dead. And now it's like, oh. So morbid. Oh, well, now, uh, Jon Snow. Everybody likes Jon Snow, and everybody likes Arya. Everybody likes Tyrion. So we're going to let these characters just be okay. All right, on, the, on, the, on the count of three, who was your favorite character in the entire show? One, two, three. Jocko. Tywin. Jocko? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, what what leads you to him so much? Because he just doesn't care about death, doesn't care about anything. He knows nothing matters. Yeah. He just goes with the flow. So you like the, the underlying core concept that he brings, like the, the more deeper intrinsic aspect of, of, of like the meta of existing. No, I just I, – I've – just had to give you a name really i really don't have a favorite in the show that's a that's a great answer i'm just too. answering your question oh classic <laughs> he answered a question you heard that guy's live on air but to bring to bring this back to to bring this back to thrones and what we liked so much about the first five seasons was that you learn you learned sort of from afar on these slow character driven experiences of each one of the of each one of these characters like we got to see from the outside as they went through every little thing that they went through and it developed in conversations and what they went and the experiences they had but that's what a tv show is supposed to do or a movie you know you're supposed to have some overarching theme or idea or concept that relates to a massive amount of people in order for people to like what you're what kind of stuff you're making what kind of movie tv content production you're trying to hit on some theme because you got to obviously sell this and connect this to a bunch of people to watch whatever you're making. So there's plenty of characters in the show. I mean, it's a really lot of shows don't do a great job. Like a lot of shows don't do that. Not even any in any season at all, especially movies. Yeah, but these guys, these directors are very good. They worked right alongside with George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin took like 20, 30 years to create this universe, which is everything we live in. It's just someone's crea- created reality. Or imagination. Someone drew up some plans on some blue pieces of paper. They're called blueprints. And now we have buildings. Because someone drew this up in their head what they wanted to look like. And now we have it. Someone designed this house in the studio that we're talking and uh, recording and living in. And now we're living inside someone's creation. It started in their mind. And they brought it to life. 
hence the idea of these multiple universes because we're just living within inside someone's different idea and concept and that just constantly reoccurs and creates and that's where we are right now hence why tv and imagination are so prone and uh, relevant in all these concepts or even like social media because you can say oh wow look at that person who gets to go travel around the world and take pictures for a living or gets to eat in restaurants for free because i want to be doing that but i can imagine myself doing that because someone's doing that but I, i'm not living it but i can recreate i can be a part of their world now because we can connect people are just lazy it's that was deep that was deep it's a power of imagination is is like helping us in a lot of ways but hindering us in others like our yearning for an Instagram model that, that many people have is causing people to not actually go out there and do it themselves. Yeah, but that's the whole thing about life. I guess you, you need people who don't want to go out and see the world, and I guess you have people who uh, like, because there's no wrong or right way to live life. It's just, hey, well, we can go on murder and rape. Don't do those two, and you're pretty okay being a human being. Don't touch this. Don't touch my woman. Don't touch my man. Don't forcibly put your penis, your vagina around their penis or inside their body, and you're good. Yeah. Uh, a, we have a few rules that everybody can really agree on. If you're doing those, you can relate and connect to people in society in 2019. Yeah, this is one of my favorite topics. We were just talking about it with Megan, kind of, right? It's, it's okay, there are edges of morality that everyone sort of agrees you shouldn't do, and then some fringe societies are cool with rape and those kinds of things. But then, you know, as you progress towards the middle, you have more and more people who are on each side of something who are like, hey, I feel like I should be doing that. Hey, I feel like you shouldn't be doing that. And you get more of a clash as you condense into the middle. It's a it's we're in a pretty crazy time in humanity in my mind where we're like trying to we're trying to globalize so much and, and bring all these vastly different cultures together and make them fit together and live together. Yeah, but people are just. Again, anybody tells you they have an answer or, you know, this is how life is and this is it's the worst it's ever been. It's the best it's ever been. It's not like you said, there's so many people, there's so much globalization and globalizing trying to occur and happen. Who th what's happening right now is just so fleeting. I mean, stop, stop trying to create a moment and say that this is it and this is how it is and how it's ever going to be, you know? Because we're you able said that like you had one specific thought in your no, mind. we're able to connect with so many different people nowadays and so many different different ideas and understandings of how to live a life and how to look at a person, a man, a woman, multiple genders now about wh what's right and what's wrong, or you know how to look or view somebody, or you know just to say, oh, it's just a person. That's it. So what? And again, we're just in a real, real trying to feel out phase. We're trying to understand. Yes, yes, completely. It's just experimentation right now. Oh, hey, oh, well, people don't like this. People like this. They don't like this. They're not ready for this. It's happened throughout the times. It, it's it's good that it's happening. It's never going to be perfect. We're moving to a, you know, we'd love to be a one earthly species that's all coexisting and on the same page and moving together. You know, we want to go to outer space, but we can't even get everybody to agree to the same things. We're never, it means either we're never going to agree to the same things or it's going to take a long, lot, lot longer to evolve psychologically or evolve on a concept or idea because we not everybody thinks the same way are, are you a lead by are, are you like a lead by example like, i know you really well so this is for for people out there but are you a lead by example kind of guy you know okay i think that this would be beneficial to x would be really beneficial to people they might not understand it or do it so i'm gonna go do it myself or are you more a uh, lead because doing is going to bring us to a, something wholly new that maybe people will latch on to. But either way, it's something I want to do. No, I'm mean, just exactly like the people I describe. I want to do things my way. I'm going to live my experience. I'm, I love learning about other people. I'm fascinated by humans. I don't hate the humans for eating other animals. I don't hate the animals for uh, getting persecuted by humans. I hate the tigers for eating rhinos. You know, I'm, I'm not for or against people in, you know, New York thinking that they're not using straws anymore and they're saving the world <laughs> because that's someone's real lead and push to do something. That's that's someone that thinks that they're, they're making an impact and that's the way they're going to impact the world. Do I think it's enough? Do I think it's too, too little, too less? Who am I to judge? But how I'm going to live my experiences, I like to learn, I like to explore, I like to travel, and I like to interact with people. 
and I want to learn. I want to be the best at everything that I'm going to take on to do. So I got to find a way to do that right now. I really want to be in creating this content, making my own show about what the things that I want to do, because I think there's a great way for people to, to learn different aspects and varieties on the values and concepts that I have. And a lot of people latch on to that. And I want to be able to take them on a journey with us. Dude, dude, dude. I'm We're doing a story. There. Well, people are going to see on YouTube. Oh, and they're I was like, about hey. to do a story, ladies and gentlemen. I was about to do and a story for And they're going to say, what are you doing on camera? Well, I mean, you could. Uh, it's your call. Yeah. So, again, it's I'm going to not, not lead by example. I'm just going to do the things I want to do. If people want to latch on or they want to be a part or they can get motivated or inspired, that's just fantastic. I, I, you know, it's, it's great to see, you know, kids from Kuwait, you know, write me on Instagram and say, you know, I've been now in – aerospace engineer at Embry Riddle University. The kids you were working with and the kids you were working with and back, coaching in Kuwait. And, coaching. and you taught me so much about being open and expressive about who I am and being, you know, making friends and talking with other people no matter where they came from. This is a kid who was fourteen when I was coaching him. And he's living in America now as a aerospace engineer, Fozon. And just is interested in helping on the India project and just talking and doing all these different things. Because he wants to, he was inspired by, you know, the kind of person I am. I call it energy or electromagnetic pulses, you know, karma, some people like to say it is like, which is whatever you want to make it as. It's, it's just putting out and then finding those people who feed off of your energy and trying to find and take something in that they can give back to you. And that's the people you want to surround yourself with or not. You got a choice. You yeah. cr- literally create your own experience. Yeah, you really do. That's, I mean, that's our, that's our concept, right? Well, what's yours? They, I, I love that, you know, for me, communication was always a vastly difficult tool. L- the fact that I'm do- even doing this right now is like, is a process for me to, to take a journey in myself to, to, to become a better communicator because I was very, I was very introspective and introverted. So everything for me was always like internal and I always wanted to communicate with people and find a way to do it. And I never knew Like when I was a kid, I, I was dreaming of like, of, of having a, a machine in which I can go in other people's brains so I could understand them better. So I could connect better. Yeah. I've heard you talk about that one. Yeah. So, so for me, this is, this is like working with, with other people who are good communicators like you or people who are like working with tools that allow me to communicate and understand people better is great. Actually, I was reading a incredible study uh, that was done the other day on VR in, and in the space, what they've done is they've taken and, and I don't want to miss I don't want to misquote, but what they've done is they've taken um, they've put kids inside VR into a program called um, Live as a Homeless Person, and you spend extensive time living as if you're a homeless person. You have to do things like you, you, you people don't stop for you. You you don't have clothes. Like you have to go through the entire experience. How real can they simulate that experience? Because it's it's still it's still obviously nascent, so it's still early. Granted, but I've done some great VR where I've been transplanted into the the stomach of a woman with a baby what? inside of it and the baby is waving to me as all these different electromagnetic pulses are in, in its brain are getting developed and um constructed and the baby looks over and he looks over at me and he winks and gives me a thumbs up <laughs> I'm just like, and you're just like in this chair that's spinning with the goggles over your head and it's and then you wake up and it's like but did, did like what did you what did you de- like did you develop any any mindset from that experience anything that like connected you with any part of yourself or babies or whatever no not at all just wow what a cool experience what more to question if what's real and what's not real and uh, you know like, like you're talking about with the uh, well in that experience in that experiment they they tested empathy afterwards and empathy levels rose over an extended over to a certain period of time. And so it's not a, it's not too long of a period, but it has um, it's a great look into potential. Obviously, VR is still early, but it's a look at the potential future that it, something like that can offer. You could go into this machine and experience the world as a homeless person and come back and have a better understanding for who they are. In my eyes, that's a, that's great. But then if you're able to take that and say, hey, maybe someone's very fearful, someone's dying to come and do something like we did, travel on one of the craziest roads in South America. They can't do that until they get it to like a movie mode where you literally Oh, wake we're not up. there yet, for but sure. I, I mean, you're still that not going to teach options. a kid unless you go drop them off in Skid Row and say, okay, 
here spend the day with Joe right here. Who, Imagine they're locked in their VR headset and they're not allowed to leave and they're like losing their social points. And they, Joe is trying to pass you, is trying to fight you over a needle because you're all trying to shoot up with heroin and you only have enough heroin for one shot and you're a seven year old and you're listen, you're plugged into this and you are having a needle fight with some man in downtown Los Angeles. Did, th- did this happen to you? This did not happen to me. Did this happened to someone you know? No, but I can construct things. Yes, yeah, we're very well constructed. I can build things. So yeah, I mean, you should be you should be the designer of some of these VRs. I wish. Well, I, it's you know I I value all the experiences I've had. You know, my mom going to drop me off in the hood to play basketball growing up and said, okay, I'll just leave you here. And just, okay, that was it. I didn't think about the people who I was hanging around with. Didn't think about, you know, where I was going, if it was dangerous or not dangerous. Just, oh, these are the people I'm with. I didn't even look at the color of their skin or where I was. Just, I'm, I'm there to play basketball. Like, that's just what you're there to do. Very, just just limit what it, what your intentions are. Find out what your intentions are. I wish my intentions were as focused as I was as a kid because I just want to play basketball and that's it. Great. But now if you just want to do so many things, it's it, it, it takes away from your experience. Whether you're working in an office, you're trading on a stock floor, you're shoveling manure on some farm in West West Sahara, Africa, you, you either got to be in it or you're not, or else you're just really missing out on everything. Uh, I want to shovel manure on a farm in, in South Africa. Well, do you want to just get plugged into a system and do it, or do you want to actually go and do it? Well, you know, you and I are going to do it. I think for other people... It's I don't want to do it. I would love to shovel manure in it. It's like that, you know, the, what was that guy? Vlog it. No, 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 no. Remember the guy, uh, Mike, who dirty jobs? And he Mike would go. Mike Rowe, he has a great podcast. Um, guy's great, yeah. That's the way I heard it. He tells incredible stories from about um, famous people or big time stories, whether it's, um, he did a great one on Harvey Weinstein's mom, who was a, like, a big time mogul in New York City growing up. And she was very beloved by all of her employees for the way she treated them. Or got some at a department store or some very, very big wealthy company. And then he told the perspective again from his mom or the people that worked for his mom and then tied it back to in a, only a seven or nine minute podcast into about Harvey Weinstein. He told the story from the perspective of the mom. Other people. So people call in and tell them perspective about incredible wow, people they may or may not beautiful. know. It's a really, really great show. It's only seven to nine minutes and it's called That's the Way This is the Way I Heard It. And so he can just he's safe to say and tell the story however he hears it, because it's not his version of the story. And he's just telling it and describing it the way it was. Um someone who was like the John Deere tractor or some kind of thing in the Midwest. And the person had this great idea for it, but they couldn't sell it. And some swindly salesman who heard overheard said, oh, wow, that, that's a good, great job. And that's the person who became famous. The person you never heard about was that person who killed himself. Same thing with, like, the Victoria's Secret. And a lot of people know this story. The guy who invented lingerie because he was a man and he couldn't go into a department store and buy his wife's my nice grandpa, lingerie. My grandpa was a lingerie salesman. And so he created this thing, Victoria's Secret, for men to go in and buy lingerie for their wives or girlfriends. Or themselves, you know, it was San Francisco especially. It's a cool, it's a cool place. And so he was able to raise a bunch of money, and then this company came in and said, "Hey, we'll buy this from you for you know, it was a few million or a billion, uh, a few million, I think it was. A few million, a few billion, big difference. They end, yeah. up, they end up buying it. Yeah. He sells it, and then a few months or a year later, the company just rockets and takes off, and it was worth like fifty times the price." And then he jumped off the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> oh, you really blew my mind with the ending. You never heard that story? Never. No, it was told in uh What perspective did, did he tell from the podcast? Um, I don't know. Just like a third person. He, wait, he, he really jumped off because – but even though he made a bunch of money, it was uh, – I'm, I'm really curious to hear that because I wonder – well, I wonder if we're even going to get to perspective of why he did something like that. You know, Let's what see. was going through his mind. How much did the guy sell Victoria's Secret for? I'm blown away by people who can who can like share a story from a from an outside perspective. Like 1982, that. Raymond sold the Victoria's Secret company with six stores, a 42 page catalog at six million per year. No, no, it was grossing six million per year, and he sold to Leslie Wexner for one million. And yeah. If you can like see, he undersold himself. Yeah, very big time undersold himself. It was if you only sold for one million, 
And let's see where it went. In 1995, it was valued at 1.9 billion with 670 stores. And then, let's see. After Raymond sold, they started a children's retail store. Went bankrupt in '86. His wife ended up getting a divorce. In 1993, he jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. (laughs) What a downfall! No pun intended. Your value. (laughs) No pun intended. No, your value. A lot of people don't value themselves. That's a problem any entrepreneur has or any individual has, whether it's in relationships, whether you... whether it's in everything. I mean, people just don't – they don't understand what their time is worth, whether it's their time on an hourly wage or are they trying to give someone a lump sum of whatever services that they're providing. No one ever – everybody thinks that, oh, this person's not going to take my business because it's too much. I I might not pay for this. It's too much. But you're not trying to think in your perspective. You're trying to think on what the consumer wants. Yeah, it's hard to disassociate yourself sometimes from from that. It's hard to disassociate yourself because everybody's yeah. in your own head. You tell yourself you're trying to find read minds on people, and you can't even get out of your own head to figure out like, oh wait wait listen, I don't no one no one cares what I'm thinking about this. I'm just trying to sell something. I'm good at something. Who cares what what I think? It's about what this person thinks. If they want to pay me seventy five dollars an hour. That's almost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh wow! I had that service. That's it. Fill the model, put it out there. You need one client. If you if you had a if you had, if you had a client that you want that was looking to express and figure out their own value, and they weren't getting something out of their life, like what kind of advice would you give them? Well, maybe they just they don't know what they want to do. Yeah, it's, it's a big problem. People yeah. don't know. They say they don't know what they want to do, and they're in fear of, you know, especially experimenting and testing on how far and how good they can be at something. But like a lot of people we know, let's talk about landing pages. And you could make, what were we talking about, how much you can make on landing pages, for example. Or we'll do a better one, video editing, because I edit videos. And yeah. I know you can get paid 80 to to $100 an hour, an hour yeah. editing videos. <sighs> well, well, guess what? it's tough. It's not easy to go and edit videos, tell a story, add different effects and put all these things in. But guess what? And the things you're missing from the creative side when they're giving you videos to edit. For one hour a day, for a hundred days, you can be a hundred times better at what you do. Guess what? If you wanted to do that in just one week, you could work on this full time for eight hours a day and you could do half of that work in just one week because that's 56 hours if you do eight hours a day for seven days a week, which is a job, which is so the most some people work. So you could be 50 times better in one week if you committed to something you want to do for a full-time job. But don't you think that people often, when, when something becomes a job to them, like something happens psychologically where when you go from like, this is, a, this is a, a fun thing that I love to do, edit video for an hour that I'm willing to freelance to full-time forced to do it. And if I don't, I can't pay the bills. It be, oftentimes it becomes something that gets muddied in your brain that you no longer are so interested in. Well, that's a way bigger question. What do you value your time? Where do you value your experience at? Your experience of what you're doing in your life. If you don't need that much money to live, then you don't need to work that much. If you value and think you're worth more money, then you could work four hours a day doing whatever you want to do. That's it's on the person. Yeah, there's less safety, there's less security on trying and doing everything you want to do. But it's a lot more it's, it's I don't say exciting, but it's a lot more adrenaline rush cuz you don't know what's going to what's going to come today, what's going to come tomorrow. Everything is just constantly changing and moving. Keep going. I'm just going to check the time on. You you've sort of taken taken something and really you've got me and I'm sure everyone else out there thinking very heavily time is something that I'm often thinking about is time a construct is time a th- is time something that I'm constraining within my own boundaries is time something that other people are constricting you on or is time something that you're not actually bound by is time something that you are creating in your brain is time something that that other people are placing restrictions you on. I'm somebody who thinks that, to rephrase, that you can make anything out of your time that you want to if you really put your mind to it, but that's so much harder. It's so much easier to say than actually do. Is it? I mean, you just, you just can't expect everything to be the greatest or it's gonna be the best as soon as you do it. I mean, because that's the problem with social media. 
even especially as for kids, it's the worst for kids because all you see is greatness in, and if you want to scale it, you say greatness in seven posts. What do you mean? People say, oh my God, look at this person. I, I don't see anything that went into how good or how hard this person they worked don't. to they don't. get to where they wanted to get today. I don't got, I don't see any of that. I'm scaling this on how many people like this page and follow round. this page. Well, yeah, but that's like the same thing with scaling. Like you can be 150 times better at something, working full time on something for just one week. Okay. You, you, you'd be 50 times better. You, you, you might be good enough and 50 times better to, to be a full time profession at what, what it is that you are working on. But nobody wants that. Everybody says, I want to be good right now. I don't want to go and do it 50 times. I mean, look at all nutrition supplements and weight loss things. No one wants to go to the gym and work. We watched that guy, Brandon Carter, on the thing yesterday. It was a former model, and he's in ridiculous, I wouldn't say shape. He looks amazing. His muscles are jacked. He's ripped. Just ab, just boop, 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 but boop, that's boop. That's some people's goal. Like someone, just look good. Like someone took a bullet gun and just said, pew, 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 shot him on his chest. This guy's just popping but he does a four minute workout exercise and he can't even complete the four minutes how, how much do you think he actually couldn't do versus how much of it was just trying to pretend he couldn't do it for the video what do you think to sells? make it to make it hard well, it i think i think it sells when you actually pretend like it's so hard you can't do it because then people are like wow this is really hard this guy can't even do it i'm gonna do it and then when they can beat it they're gonna be like they're when they're gonna build up to it and beat it f- more quickly and they're gonna go oh shit I fucking worked my ass off to Brandon Carter's videos. But it's like our buddy who is like, oh, well, oh, if he can't do it. It must be really, really hard. Like, no, this person just doesn't, I don't know, I don't know the person, but like, it's just about, a, like, as much as I've worked, I'm a crazy person. I'm a crazy person when it comes to everything. And I think you have to work hard. And the fact that I push myself to be a crazy person and put myself in these situations that not anything is too hard to conquer or compete or get done, no matter the circumstances. It's probably not a healthy thing <laughs> because I put this idea into my entire life, whether it's work, relationships, and you're dealing with other people. And other people don't work the same way you do. So it's finding that ground and finding... Well, what you just said is exactly it. Other people don't work the way that you do. So certain people that you know, including yourself, understand that. And they're able to psychologically know that, okay, this person doesn't work like that. So what I have to do is I've got to create a system that makes them want to reach this level. So Brandon Carter is probably, I don't, I want to say probably, but but he could very well be putting that video out knowing that psychologically it's something that's going to make people work to something that they might not otherwise have. D-B-A-D. Don't be a bitch, dude. You, oh, you just want to see him kick ass. No, I know. Yeah. You just want to see him kick ass. So it, it it looks better on our end, but he might only be about making money from what I hear. So if he is, and that's the tested, proven model for fitness people to get people to follow you and love your shit, follow Brandon Carter. He's your guy. It is. Hey, I don't have pew, a tested, pew, proven pew, model. I damn. Mean, that's yeah, the abs. I mean, just off. incredible body, shoulders popping, traps. Can't do it. I know. I was pissed. Round. You were so mad. What that that it, it is bullshit for someone in the fit in the fitness industry. It's we understand that it's bullshit that that he's putting this out there and it's not something that. How did you think that it was for your actual body? Did it look like something that was good for your hips and your and your chest? I wasn't paying too much attention. It was okay. But I mean, again, exercises and workout programs are all varied because it depends on the individual. You know, same thing goes with diet. I mean, you, we can't just be feeding somebody. The same exact thing as what somebody else might be eating. It's not everyone agrees with that. I mean, no, no one does. I mean, what well, people say they're keto, but I mean, just you, you need to be at least minimum 70% fat over everything else. But, you know, that's not technically going to get you into a ketogenic state right away. You can say you're eating ketogenic, but you're not in a ketogenic state. And the ketogenic state's a really hard thing for your body. You're changing your body's energy creation. Your body is making one thing. That's like going into a car and saying, car, I know you've been accepting Fly. regular gas, but now we're going to put, no, we've been saying premium gas the entire time. And now we're going to put unleaded gasoline in there and work regular. 
Cars break. I'm no mechanic. They, I, I wouldn't know. Cars break. Buses break too. Buses break too. So you can't just be putting one fuel source in and thinking that you're transitioned over into another fuel source or a few full fuel creation. Excuse me. You're telling your body on a chemical and compound level to say, hey, liver, don't create this anymore. We're doing this. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. I know you've been doing this for 20 years, making glucose for me. But now I want the ketones and expect no stress or no harm to come to yourself. The same thing comes with gratitude and meditation and, and, and those practices and mindfulness. You, you can't just one day all of a sudden think you can focus on your breath for, for 20 seconds and you're going to be in a meditative state and everything's going to clean out in your entire existence. It's something that you need to that you want to treat like you refueled yourself and you have to you have to practice it daily and do it, you know, do it occasionally and tr work on sharing it into the real world. If it's not something that you apply practically, it's something that you're 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 if you if you for instance the gym, right? If you do a specific workout, you're doing that work that workout benefits the specific motion that you're engaging in, right? So the same thing comes with the meditation process. If you're sitting in your room, closing your eyes and listening to music, and then you want to go apply that into the real world, you didn't just work that muscle, right? That's why writing gratitude and doing journals is such a beneficial thing because when you write things down, you're, you're practicing the, the form of expression versus closing your mind silently. It's a huge mistake that I was making by just being a meditative person because I thought I was like creating awareness of what's surrounding me, but then I couldn't apply it practically. And so I really think it's, for me, it's like the same thing that you're describing right here. It's, it's with the fat sources and the fuel. Like I was, I was operating on unleaded. People are operating on leaded and then they're trying to drop in some premium and then go back to unleaded. doesn't work. doesn't work. Please don't hurt yourself. If you're going to try keto ketosis, actually getting to a ketogenic state, read up, go to your doctor, test your vital levels before you do any of this. Really, really, it, we're, no one is recommending this diet to anybody. You should follow. Well, Brandon's about to do a. You're about to do a Tuesday keto on our YouTube channel. Keto dishes. I mean, you can try and do these dishes and try and be keto. I'm all about cheating. I'm all about hacking. I'm all about showing that you you can. There's ways to get around everything. There's always a plan C. Some people would say that's being a smartass. That's some people saying that you're trying to be better than the system that's in place. But I say, you're better than that, and you're better than them. Don't settle for less. So we're going to start in this Fat Tuesday Keto series. We're going to make these keto cheats. We're going to be testing these macro levels. We're going to be putting these fun little recipes that all of us have uh, come together or you know come across in all of our diet uh, dieting experience. So another new thing on the YouTube channel. Come join us in the kitchen. Uh, we're at 32.55 at a bunch of things for this, this, and that. Anything else we want to go over? Anything else? Ladies and gentlemen, no, just, just ladies and gentlemen, 32 minutes. If, if you were out there to raise your hand and, and ask if we should talk again, I'd ask you, but you're not. You're not. You're not. We're not live. We're doing the experience. You're not. But yeah, now this one's going to be on YouTube, so yeah, why don't you just, uh, take everybody home, sign them off on YouTube, on the podcast. Awesome. So thank you for joining us here on this episode. It was a great one. We love chatting. Now we're in LA, so we're going to be out doing some incredible adventures. Coming up, we have we have a world we have a gold medal. Excuse me, we have a, a Olympian. Olympian words, you know. So we're actually going to be going out and doing some video with him. So check out our YouTube channel. We're going to be doing the Tuesday dishes. We're going to be all around LA doing some fun adventures. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. And thank you to our sponsors, Amazon. If you shop on Amazon, go to our website, head right down, shop through the Amazon portal. Amazon portal has been a big help. Thank you for everybody who yes, shopped has. through there. And you all shop through there. Don't don't lie. Just go in down there, support the page. We if see. you watch this video, if you watch this all the way through, thank you, number one. And number two, thank us by going and shopping on there. We're going to thank you again for that. And, yeah, that's it. On the bus is out. Uh, for those who...